I wanted to somewhat celebrate Joe Rogan. Yes, a bit of a weird one here, but I want to celebrate Joe Rogan just because I've just figured out or I just realized that he's halfway through his Spotify deal. So if I'm not mistaken, the Spotify deal, for whatever reason, Spotify agreed to give this man a hundreds of millions of dollars for only three or four years, I think the deal was, allegedly, right? So he's only halfway through his, his four year deal. And I went to sp I went to kind of speak about this mostly based on what's kind of going to speak about later. Obviously, the deal that he signed was amazing, right? He signed a deal where it was worth anywhere between 100 million to 300 million dollars, where he licensed his podcast to Spotify. What does license his podcast mean? It means that he owns the IP, the intellectual property of that podcast. He still owns it. He's just licensing it to Spotify so that they can stream it exclusively on their platform. But when that contract is up or when that deal is done, he can then go back onto Apple or back onto YouTube like he wanted, regardless of whatever the deal he has struck before with Spotify. So it's perfect. It's one of the best deals you could ever get a licensing deal. But in terms of what's going on now with all this nonsense with Brendan and stuff, I think in general, in life, it's pretty advantageous to get to a point. Obviously, we're not all going to get to a point where we're earning 100 million a year, but to get to some level of financial security so you don't have to care about the nonsense that goes on in everyday life. Because part of me thinks all of this stuff happening with Brendan and stuff and the Fire and the Kid and Kalila and Bobby Lee and Tiger Belly, I generally don't think Joe Rogan either knows what's happening or actually cares. I generally think he doesn't. And the reason he doesn't is because he's got $100 million in the bank just sitting there. When you've got that kind of money, there is no reason why you should bother yourself with the nonsense goings on on the ground floor in the LA comedy scene that I don't think also that Brendan definitely, 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 I mean, sorry, that Joe Rogan definitely doesn't care about. And one reason why I say this is because if you have watched the recent episode of Joe Rogan podcast where Brendan was on it, there were parts of it where I was generally thinking, do these guys talk as much as Brendan makes it out to be? Because Joe was asking him questions, like little ones, like, oh, why do you name the, the you know, the Tiger Fick Whiskey Tiger? You know, not knowing this fucking, his name, the, um, the, num the name of, of his um, of his kid. Um, little things he didn't know about his stand-up special. Little things he didn't know about what he's been doing on the show. He just didn't, you know what I mean? It just seemed there's a bit of a disconnect going on there in terms of their relationship. Like maybe that they may, they might conversate here on their on Instagram DMs or on texts, but in terms of actually talking and hanging out in real life they did prior, it's not the same at all. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that he is, of course, moved to Austin, but also the money has somewhat in kind of in not what's what's the thing called? It's it's created a barrier around him where it's kind of lifted him up to a certain level where only certain people can get in touch with him. And it wouldn't surprise me if at this point Joe Rogan probably changed his number again so whatever number he had in LA has probably changed he doesn't hang out with the same people he's trying to start a, co a scene over there he's meant to be opening a comedy club but I don't really know you know what's going on over there but I just wanted to make that point just quickly about this like I generally do think like most of those guys in LA who are going and running to him especially Brendan more so Brendan because he's the only one that's been accused of it and crying about what this person did what that person did they really kind of it's falling on deaf ears because I don't think this guy really gives a crap he definitely doesn't care he honestly 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 doesn't care um and it's all because he's earned a lot a lot of money over the years of doing stand-up and he's put himself in a unique position so big up joe rogan for doing the damn thing being an inspiration to all i've been listening to this guy since what episode number 400 or so he obviously inspired me to do my own podcast and start doing my own thing and he's clearly somebody who has kind of you know um, someone that clearly moves to the sound of his own drum and has just, you know, been on a non-stop journey to collect as many coins as possible so he doesn't have to talk to people. <laughs> That's basically what he's done. He rarely does podcasts, you know, other people's shows. He just stays on his and kind of minds his own business and avoids all the drama. Even though Brendan did try and get him involved in the drama with that whole, like, bald guy slanging dick thing, but he does just keep himself to himself. So big up him, big up him.